Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here for Gibson TV. We're hanging out backstage at NAMM 2020. I couldn't be more stoked. You're an absolute legend, Terry Reed. Dude, mm -hmm. it's nice to finally hey, uh, meet you in person. Kind. We have a mutual mm -hmm. friend, uh, Joe Bonamassa. Yeah, yeah, who, yeah, uh, yeah. I think he met recently. You well, did some work with too, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, Joe's a real deal. I mean, what he, I like people that do what they say, you know. So at first it started off, I sold him a guitar of mine that I'd had years since I was 17 or something like that, you know. And uh, a Fender Telecaster that was a 52 with a 49 neck, which is when in full, you know, they were scrambling when they got a deal for 2,000 guitars. Yeah. They're going, we quick. Start making them. And they're putting yeah. necks and bodies like this, yeah. right? So uh, in the back of the neck was written Eddie, which Joe freaked when he took the neck yeah, off and you know, saw yeah. that because Eddie was one of the main routers and craftsmen for necks. So this was all wonderful. So everybody was offering me silly money for the guitar. You know, it wasn't worth selling it. So I went, oh, I don't know. And I get a call. He said, my name's Joe Bonamassa. And I said, yeah, yeah, okay. That's, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. He said, what do you really want cash? And I said, well, I want 20 grand. And he goes, whatever. And he goes, what are you doing tomorrow? And I went, well, I'm not doing anything. He said, well, I'll pop up and see you. And he goes, I said, well, that'd be nice. He popped up, right, played the guitar. Play some Chet Atkins stuff, which was very surprising, yeah. right? Blew me right. And I went, okay, run out to the car. And I thought, oh, you don't like it. Came back with a suitcase yeah. of cash. Mm -hmm. So Love it was Joe. the beginning of a wonderful relationship. <laughs> are, you, are you doing the cruise? Yeah. You... So what happened is the next time he comes up to play a gig at Aqua Caliente Casino, he, he invited me to go and do a song with him. I said, well, look, I'd like to come talk guitars again. It would be great. And he goes, well, why don't we do a song? I went, that's a good that's idea. That's a good idea. Too. Right. So we do that. We're in a storm. Now everybody in the band <laughs> it was yeah. from the Allman Brothers or, or wherever, you know. And uh, it became a whole event. So he says, we got to do this. we got to do it again. So now he's booked me to do the Mediterranean Blues Cruise right, in August, which, will be, which is yeah. Monte Carlo and, you know, all it's, these terrible places. It's rough. It's a lovely time of the year to that wind, that Mistral wind's not blowing off Africa, no. which will kill you, you know, really. You're also, I mean, you played with everybody. You've been doing sessions and stuff. You're doing some film film stuff now? Yeah, too? yeah well, I, well, the film thing, I've done a little film stuff, acting things, so nothing to really shout about, but um, I did some acting things with Bill Paxton, God bless him, who, who passed. Yeah. He was a wonderful man and uh, he did a big golf movie and he walks up to me at a gig one night and he says, I've got just the part for you in this movie of mine. I went, look, look you've had a lovely career so far. Don't ruin it. No, <laughs> you, know, you don't want to do that. And I was uh, the golf caddy in a movie, right? You know, that was that. So recently, uh, well, the last, well, I don't know, about five years ago or so, there was a, uh, a movie called Devil's Rejects. The Rob Zombie right, film. The Rob yeah. Zombie did, right? And uh, I get this call from a friend of mine, Joel High, who was at Lionsgate, and then said, you, I've given him your album and he loves it. He wanted one song and he's picked three for the movie. I went, ka-ching. Yeah. Now, he just put two songs more in the new one, Three From Hell, yeah. Yeah. right? And we then we got to hang out. Uh, 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 he had a big party, uh, uh, an after party for the movie. And uh, I sat through there with, God, yeah, it's pretty bloody, that one, you know. Yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> I get to a line in my song, and it's like, when a friend brings to light on a cold silver knife, you know, and he, then he cuts somebody's throat, and I go, oh, I don't know. You know, I never thought of that. <laughs> that wasn't what you were thinking when you, <laughs> What's it exactly? wasn't the concept. So when I do it live, it's sort of it's like a, a thing runs across your head a bit, you know. But he's great. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Really fantastic guy. Now, I... Uh, they would kill me if I didn't ask you something about the what? Rolling Stones. About the Rolling Is there, Stones. Can you yeah. share like one great Stone story? There, it, Maybe two. Can we do two? Uh, At least whatever. one. Give me one it's great English. Stone. Because wait, you started, you started doing things with... Yeah, I, yeah. I started working with the Stones. I, I felt like I went to Keith Richards' School of Hard Knocks. You know, that's what I call it. Right? I left school at 15. I went on tour with the Rolling Stones. Now, I, I know that sounds nuts. I mean, it's Dude. like, it's not what you would want. My mother's, oh, no, <laughs> it's what, what you do, you know. But uh, that's what happened. I, I, Keith and Mick came down to a club, the Marquee Club in London, 
And uh, so he's playing and, and he got elected. You know, sometimes those things will happen, right? Which changed my whole life. You know? What era Stones was This it? was Brian Jones. This is still yeah. Brian this Jones era Let's Stones. Let's spend the night together. Oh, wow. And uh, my mother's final breakdown, you know. It comes my 90th nervous, nervous breakdown. breakdown. I, I, they, were, they were bizarre tunes. When you look back at the, well, they, that, nobody writes really bizarre tunes like that. <laughs> they were off the wall. The audience had no idea what they were saying because they were screaming too loud, you know. You, you never heard anything you did, right? But then later on, getting to know them pretty well, like they, they asked me to do the 1969 tour, right? All over the States, 40 cities or something, you know. That was banal, that was crazy. Was that your first time? In, uh, Coming I know to... I'd come over with Eric Clapton and The Cream a year before, 1968. That was their farewell tour. Right? I'm just going to see how many different names of bands that you all love we can get you uh, to, to, to... Well, I, you know, I know it sounds like it. No, it's, it's funny, but it's, it's, a real, it, it's very flattering to be friends with, still friends with the, uh, a lot of these people that we mentioned. And uh, that's what we do, you know. I, I, I treasure it, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, it's really. You were coming up during the time of kind of that first era of Guitar Heroes, and you were one of yeah. them yourself. Oh yeah. But like, do you remember? Like, tell me about the first time you heard Hendrix. Yeah. Okay. You nailed it right there. Okay. That. Can you swear a little on this or not? No, it's Gibson. Yeah. Where is rock and roll? Well, one yeah. thing that pissed everybody off in England, uh, guitar wise, right, was I know I'd met Jimmy before, right, in New York, and anyway, so Chaz Chandler brought him to England. And he said, I don't want you to play. Don't play. Don't play guitar. Now, which is impossible to tell Jimmy. So I got to know him. He'll, he'll play at the drop of a hat, right? He said, but just keep it cool and I'll let you know when. So there's a club in London. This is a story that everybody, it's become history, right? That I've heard it from other people. But uh, a friend of mine, Peter J and me, got, uh, would hang out at this club called the uh, Scotch St. James or the Bag of Nails, right? We go in one, usually it's a place we go so nobody would bother you. Well, this night we go in and Paul McCartney walks in and, uh, and John Lennon walks in and Pete Townsend walks in and Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck walks in and Brian Jones walks in. He comes over and I go, what the hell is going on? Then I see Chaz and I went, uh-oh. Right? And this is the night, that, the first night that they got him to get up and play. Oh he gets up, borrows the amps, plugs them together. Uh, Eric Barrett got that together, right? You plug them all together. Two stacks of Marshalls in a club. It's pretty cruel, right? Anyway, and he said, I'd love to do this little song that I know is close to your heart. He says, everybody, it's my favorite group. It's, a, uh, it's this little thing called Wild Thing. And everybody went, wow, what? Wild Thing. <laughs> it's a group that you love to hate, the, the trogs at, yeah. at the time, you know, when they do. So he roars into that, and I'll tell you, it was the end of the guitar myth of England. I mean, all the guitar players, Brian Jones came running back to our table, and he's going, oh, Terry. I said, what's the matter? He said, it's a flood in the front, there's water everywhere. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, all oh, the guitar players crying, it's terrible. <laughs> so you were there, that, yeah. and you just remember that everybody's night. reaction. Yeah. You remember, well, I mean, she, what, what did you think when oh, this? Well, I'd seen him play with Russ and Roland Kirk as well. Now, <laughs> now, now flip the coin then, because Jimmy was a multi, he wasn't a blues musician, that's easy to say. A, 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 jazz, a jazz entrepreneur is more what he was. You, 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 you listen to the lines, he never repeats a line. It's one flowing piece of bliss, you know. That's the way he played, you know. It's all just from here to there. It's amazing. Never heard anything like it. And he, I, he went to get up at Ronnie Scott's club in London. Yeah. And he got up to play with Rassam Roland Kirk, you know, playing all the saxophones and flutes with his nose and the whole deal. And he, first of all, Jimmy came over to our table. And for those who don't know, Rassam Roland Kirk is blind. And not only that, he's he's very ornery kind of guy, you know. So anyway, he's sort of suddenly Jimmy comes over with his case and sits at our table, and he's like, and he says, he's asked me to play. I said, you're gonna play with Roland Kirk? And he says, yeah. He said, what? He says, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know what to do. I said, well, all of a sudden, Roland Kirk says, where's that 
blues boy I keep hearing about, Jimi Hendrix, get up here and let's play, right? And then Jimmy says, how does he know I'm here? <laughs> I said, I think he's got people out there that find out, you know. Right? <laughs> and he was shaken, right? He got up, you never heard anything like it. There must be a tape of it somewhere. Somebody must have been rolling something. But his whole plan was to make this album, but God bless before he passed, with Miles Davis. They were working on this I album. I heard that they were you working that. on something. He gets yeah. out now. I don't know if they ever cut anything, but... I was in New York with him and, he, and uh, Miles came around and they were in the other room and playing and I'm going, wow, yeah, blues, you know. <laughs> it's, it's not just the blues, it, they're gone. And this is after Bitches Brew, so you know where we're going yeah. now. Yeah. It was very contemporary. I mean, I miss him, I miss him a lot, you know, he's a the, good guy. You know? I just need to, uh, it, we could talk literally all day. You um, could have had Jimmy Andrews because like, he's endless. Like, you know? uh, Chuck Berry stole your amp. Uh, yeah, and can I hear, yeah. can I hear? Well, he's done it. He did it to Keith as well. So we're on tour with the Stones, okay. And uh, one night was B.B. King, who is an absolute gentleman. No. The most beautiful human being I think I've ever met. And uh, the next night, they flip-flop, it was Chuck Berry. So the first time we, B.B. King and B.B.'s friendly and lovable and, and tells you how things should be and it's not as bad as you think it might be and all that, you know, he's the man of hope. The next night you got Chuck who turns up in a Cadillac yeah. and he's already gone to the local high school, right? And recruited every 14 to 15 year old lad that plays the guitar, bass or drums and says, you know, Johnny be good. You're well, if you don't know Johnny Be Good, you shouldn't be playing a guitar yeah. in the first place, right? And they said, yeah. So he says, you've got a gig tonight at the main stadium or with the Rolling Stones, right? And they go, what? That's what he did. They turn up. And that was the band. Now, they couldn't it. deal with the delay from 15,000 feet away, but <laughs> yeah, there was some things that happened that you, you have to learn, right? But he gets so, and, and, and this one night he goes, oh, Terry. He says, go. he says, I got another gig. Could I go on before you? And she's like, no, I, can't. I, I don't want to go on after Chuck Berry. And uh, this hero thing starts to play in. Now, Keith had told me earlier on, when Chuck does the tour, don't lend him anything. Don't, don't lend him. He said, he's a crook. He'll steal. <laughs> you know, I'm going, now what's going on here? He, he said, he will. He'll steal your shit. Right? And I'm going, ah. Oh. So he's asking me, can I borrow your amp? Because I have another gig and I have to get out of here, right? Now he's already just legged the band from the, the high school, <laughs> college, yeah. the high school, and it's not sounding very good. He just rules away, right? And uh, of course I say yes. I can't say no to you. Can you? You no. know, I just, yeah, the, so I lent him the amp. I, I go to go on stage, right? The amp, the twin reverb is gone. I go, mm -mm. now all I thought about was Keith's going to kill me because <laughs> he told, told you me, better. don't lend him any. And so I go and I, ah, Keith, he stole my frigging name, right, you know. <laughs> and he goes, I try, he got all mad with me, got <laughs> really mad. But the, the, the neat thing was about the tiny Keith was the next day when we turned up at the gig, there's a brand new twin reverb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, I think I learned my lesson, you yeah. know. Yeah, you did. But we could we could do this all day. Yeah, it's been I like know, an absolute pleasure to meet you. You're I applaud your fashion sense. <laughs> yeah, you, I know. We, like, we we bad shot. Yeah, for yeah. hanging out backstage. Yeah. Nam 2020 with Terry Reed. We're gonna be checking in all weekend. See you Good guys. deal, man.